Senator Monsion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Gray, um, could you speak of the uh, regulatory burden because you spoke of regulatory burden in your uh, statements and how this bill impacts regulatory burdens for your, uh, for your group? Um, the fall economic statement mentioned eventually making some progress towards reducing regulatory burden. Uh, the bill, as we see it, the, within what's laid out in C32 does not quite go uh, as far as we had hoped. So uh, within the text, I, I don't see much, uh, frankly, that will reduce regulatory burden within the subject matter of the bill. Um, I'm happy to speak to some of the regulatory burdens we'd like to see addressed, however. Please do. Um, Interprovincial trade barriers, the fact that, you know, we have one prosperous country and still have hundreds of different uh, interprovincial trade barriers that uh, that continue to hinder our, our economic uh, development is frustrating. I would point to the transportation sector where certain truck configurations must be driven by, by night in one province and by day in another, uh, thereby limiting the time that you can cross into from, from British Columbia into Alberta. And I would also point to labor mobility. There are high administrative burdens in some provinces, for example, obtaining insurance required to enter a certain profession, uh, differing educational criteria for nurses and social workers. Um, an example I would point to that's quite effective is the uh, the Red Seal uh, program, which is uh, which is you know more or less a national standard with national accreditation. So uh, there really shouldn't be as many burdens as there are. Thank you. Um, and the other question that I have is um, you spoke of some of these barriers because of uh, provincial um, uh, barriers. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. right. um, how is it uh, or what would be the government's implication in this to correct some of these barriers? Because uh, it, I, think just I, I will, I will add that it is interesting for us to learn about these barriers and, um, and, you know, maybe at some point work with you on some of these items. Mm -hmm. um, I think the uh, the federal government's main role in this obviously is to collaborate with the provinces and to be able to establish a registry of these interprovincial trade barriers. Um, essentially, what we're looking for from the government is leadership uh, to reduce the over 100 barriers and exemptions that were made in the Canada Free Trade Agreement. Um, this, we would hope that a public registry of regulatory exemptions highlighting existing barriers would educate Canadians on said barriers and compel governments to defend why they exist within our national economy. All right, thank you. Do I still have mm -hmm. some time? Uh, my next question is for Mr. I wrote your name down. Sorry, Mr. Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> um, you talked about the uh, excise taxes and how does the excise taxes uh, uh, impact your, uh, your SMEs? Uh, well, the excise tax that I was speaking of more than others was on liquor. Uh, and of course, there are small businesses <clears throat> yeah, that are producers, of course, of beer and wine uh, that, that, are, that are facing these higher rates of taxation. Then, of course, the restaurant sector uh, is made up of uh, many or most independent businesses. And, and they, too, then have to pass that on to their consumers, increasing the cost that they have to pay. The increases that they have to pass on to consumers obviously doesn't help a small firm in, in making a profit themselves. All right. Uh, the other question is about the um, cannabis. Uh, what I've seen in the past few, uh, I would say, uh, months is the prolifer la proliferation. There's so many right. of these stores opening everywhere. How is that helping um, your, 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 the producers or, or the, 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 the businesses that are already out there? Or is it? It, well, look, any, any new sector of the economy, any time that there's a rush to get into, uh, into a line of business, often they, there is a, an abundance of entrepreneurs that wish to jump into that sector with the view that they're going to uh, have a, a pathway to earn an income. Um, and, uh, and often when that happens, there, is, there are too many that go into a sector uh, that then starts to flatline and, and businesses realize that that's not going to happen. Some consolidation happens. These are typical things that happen. Uh, from from a franchise perspective, in and really in, in any part of of the economy, particularly newer uh, developments, um, so that's not entirely surprising. And I don't know that the government uh, has a role in that. That is the private sector uh, sorting itself out. Where governments, of course, do have a role to play, um, is ensuring that the regulatory 
uh, burdens to get into a particular sector are not too high, that the tax rates that, that, that entrepreneurs are faced with are not, uh, are not uh, overly significant, uh, and, and keeping, it, keeping a level playing field for all producers. The cannabis industry uh, does have some challenges in that respect in that there is a combination of large, very large and some smaller players. Um, I do think on the retail side that, you know, just candidly as an observer, I do think that there are there is likely to be a shakeout where many of these small retail locations uh, end up uh, uh, not finding a pathway to profitability and close their doors. Thank you.